the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah.
out of the place from the depths of our soul. We're gonna magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. There is no doubt, no, because I, I have seen your faithfulness. You are faithful, Lord. I God, Jesus. you are faithful. Over and over. magnify the Lord right now. Let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Raise your voice on the heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. I feel an anointing in the house right now. Hallelujah. 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 Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just seek after him a few more moments right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God, we love you and we praise you. We love you and we worship you. We love you and we magnify you, Father. God, you are mighty and you are awesome. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Come on, church. Love the Lord right now. Oh, hallelujah. Just love the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, 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 I give you praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. We want to go, amen, to the Lord in prayer right now. Let's pray for Sister Alicia that God will give her strength, amen, and help her during this time. She flew up to Michigan today to be with her grandfather. Uh, he is not responsive, and um, they don't expect him to live with 48 hours if that long he has not eaten in a couple of days amen so let's pray amen for Alicia her family and her grandfather also let's pray for uh, brother David's grandfather Frederick Johnson uh, he was involved in an automobile accident late this afternoon amen that God will uh, touch him 
bring healing to his body. Brother Williamson, we need to pray. He is sick tonight. Pray that God will touch him. Sister Andrea Horn is not feeling well. Let's pray that God will touch her. Let's pray God touch Sister Gay Joyner tonight. Amen. Let's pray for, amen, our church family that's not here. Let's also pray for my sister-in-law's mother-in-law. Did they take her off the life support, you know? Amen. That God will, God will touch this family. Amen. During this time, in Jesus' name. God is good. Amen. Let's pray for our internet connection. Our live stream is down. Amen. Because we have no internet in the church. And uh, so all those that normally watch are not able to watch. So let's pray we get that up and running here in a moment. In Jesus' name. Let's pray for backsliders. Amen. That God will touch our church family that's not here. People we've invited to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Jesus, I love you and I praise you and I worship you. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. God, you are a mighty God and you are a great God. I love you and I praise you, Lord. I love you and I worship you, Lord. God, I ask you to touch Sister Alicia tonight. God, I ask you to bring comfort and healing and strength to her, Lord, during this time with her grandfather. God, I ask you to touch Mr. Mullins in Jesus' name. God, let your spirit be upon him in Jesus' name. Touch Miss Chisholm, Lord. Touch the Chisholm family in the name of Jesus. Let there be a comfort, Lord, and a peace to flow in the name of Jesus. Touch Brother Williamson tonight. Bring healing to his body. In the name of the Lord, touch Sister Andrea Horn. Bring healing to her body. Touch Sister Gay Joyner. Bring strength to her body tonight. In the name of the Lord. God, touch Brother David's grandfather, Mr. Johnson. God, I ask you to bring healing to his body. In the name of the Lord. I praise you and I love you, Lord. Touch our church family that's not here tonight. God, I ask you to minister to them. Touch the backsliders that are in this area, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I praise you and I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are a mighty God. Continue to touch Brother Nathan. Continue to touch Sister Shoe. Continue to touch Brother and Sister Rhodes. Continue to touch my wife, Lord, for healing and strength in their bodies. In the name of Jesus, I praise you and I love you, Jesus. I praise you and I magnify you, Jesus. I praise you and I glorify you. I thank you, Lord, and I love you and I praise you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. God, you are a mighty God and you are an awesome God. I give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. You may be seated. Brother Holland, come. Let's receive our evening tithe and offering. Amen. Let's give unto the Lord tonight. And the Lord will bless you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Ask the blessings. Lord, we thank you this evening for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We ask you to bless the sound of the altar, the gift and the giver. Bless the remainder of the service. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Give unto the Lord. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will touch you. He is an awesome God, and he is a mighty God. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for his blessing and his goodness in Jesus' name. Brother Holland, if you'll be so kind and bring me a bottle of water when you come back in here, I would appreciate it in Jesus' name. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want us to go to the book of Exodus chapter 15, and we are going to read verses 2 and 3. Exodus chapter number 15, verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, The Lord is my strength and song. He has also become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. I will prepare him a dwelling place. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Verse number three, the Lord is a man of war, and the Lord is his name. And I want to minister for the next few moments, my God, my warrior, my God, my warrior. Brother Kicklider, would you pray over the word tonight? Lord Jesus, we love you, mighty God. Thank you so much that we can 
can be here tonight to worship and praise you, to learn about you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. As we begin to love Jesus, hopefully what is written by Moses under the anointing of the Lord, that the Lord will become our strength. The Lord will become our song. He has become my salvation. Another word for the Savior or salvation would be deliverer. He is my God. And I am going to prepare him a place to dwell in, to live in, a habitation for the Lord to move in. That is my life. And I will exalt him because the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. In any hand-to-hand -hand combat, there's a constant back and forth of blows. There's a constant dodging. There's a constant blocking. There is a constant counter-attacking. And that is what is going in the unseen world, in the spiritual world. we got to understand and we realize that we are in a battle. Amen. We are in a warfare. And it is not a battle and it is not a warfare that we are going to be able to overcome by our strength and by our ability. But when we understand that the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my song. The Lord is my deliverer and my God. Amen. He is that man of war. And he is going to dwell with inside of me. And if my God is going to dwell with inside of me, I am going to be the victor in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when the devil begins to fight, when the enemy begins to throw up roadblocks, my God is there. My God is going to deliver. My God is going to save. My God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And I am going to exalt him. And I am going to love him. And I am going to praise him. And I I am going to worship him. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now the place that the battle takes place in is in our thoughts and in our minds. Because when we begin to lust, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when sin it is finished, James tells us, it bringeth forth death. When lust is conceived, how is that done? It is by the process of our thoughts. For the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, 1 John chapter 5 writes, is not of God, but it is of the world. Where is this lust conceived? It is in our eye. Amen. What we see in our ear, what we hear. Amen. And then the actions of our life, the pride of life. Amen. And so we need to understand that not only is Jesus our Savior from sin, but he needs to be Lord. He needs to be my God. God, he needs to be my warrior over my mind, my spirit, and my heart. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, you've heard me preach from it before. We are going to cast down imaginations, those thoughts, those images that are in our mind, and every high thing that exalts itself against what? Against the knowledge of God. Where is the knowledge of God? It is in our mind. So when those thoughts come in, when those images come in. Amen. And they try to counter the knowledge of God that we have. We are going to take our authority. We are going to take our dominion. We are going to take our place because my God is my warrior. He is my strength and he is my song and he has become my salvation. So Lord, I want you to do what you are famous for. Amen. I want you to show yourself strong in my heart. I want you to show yourself strong in my mind. I want to be receptive of the blessing. I want to be receptive of the salvation. I want to be receptive of the deliverance. And I want you to know that you are the captain of my salvation. You are my fortress. You are my high tower. You are my shield. And you are my buckler. And I am going to cast down this through the Spirit of God those images and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I am going to bring every thought. Look what he said in 10 and 5 of 2 Corinthians. Every thought 
into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And when I begin to yield myself to God, God through the power of the Holy Ghost is going to be my Savior. So those thoughts that Satan will try to put in my mind that will cause me to doubt, that will cause me to fear, that will cause me not to believe, or that will cause me to lust after. I take dominion and I take authority over because I've got the word of God and I am going to claim the spirit. I am going to claim the word. I am going to claim the blood. Somebody say amen. And I am going to think upon my God who is my strength and my song and my God is greater than any lust. My God is greater than any trial. My God is greater than any doubt. My God is greater than any fear. But I've got to understand and I've got to believe that he is my God and he is my warrior. So when we are under attack, we have to hang on to the truth, folks. We cannot let go of the word of God. When Satan comes at us, when the enemy comes at us, we're going to throw the word of God right back at him. This is how Jesus overcame Satan. Do you realize that? When Jesus prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible tells us that he was hungry and thirsty. Amen. And the Bible tells us when the tempter came in Matthew 4 and 3, he said, if you be thou the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. You know, Jesus could have reasoned and said, you know, I've already fasted and prayed. I've accomplished what I want to do, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to command these stones to be turned into bread. But he was not willing to do that because he was not going to yield to the temptation that came from the devil. Oh, yeah, when he got out of the wilderness, as we read in Matthew chapter 4, the angels came and ministered unto him. I believe the angels came and brought him food. But yet when the devil tried to sort shirk at the plan of God, amen, this is what Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 4. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's time to understand that as Jesus is a man of war, he gives us his words that we can stand upon and we can counterattack. Amen. The enemy by the word. Amen. By the power of the spirit that lives within inside of us. He is my song. I am going to worship him. I am going to love him. I am his habitation. God, I want you to take control. Then the Bible says in verse number 5, Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city, and sheddeth him on the pinnacle of the temple. And Satan said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. You know, as far as the carnal mind is concerned, this would have been a good time for Jesus to prove himself who he really was. But if he would have done that, he would have succumbed to the temptation of Satan. And so what did he say? He said unto him in verse number 7, it is written again. It is written again. It is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So when those thoughts come in your mind, when those doubts come in your mind, when that fear comes in your mind, when that lust comes in your mind, in your mind. Amen. My God is my warrior. He is a God of war. And I am going to take up his word that he has given to me. And I am going to speak it under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I am going to speak it under the anointing of God. And I am going to throw the word of God right back into his face. So instead of thinking upon these things that the devil tries to put there, that the world tries to put there, or the flesh tries to put there, I'm going to counterattack with the word of God. I'm going to erase them. I'm going to remove them by the word of God. Somebody say amen. Again, the devil taketh him up into exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto them, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then Jesus saith unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it 
is written, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. I'm here to tell you when you counterattack with the word of God, because my God is a man of war, and there is power, and there is authority in the word of God, there will come a time and come a point when you invoke the word of God and you believe what you're saying that Satan's got to leave he has got to be removed amen he has got to flee and when he begins to flee because you allow Jesus to help you the angels of God the spirit of God is going to minister to you and touch you and bless you because my God is my warrior he is my deliverer he is my savior he is my strength and he is my soul Song. God is going to express himself through his word. Somebody say amen. amen. God is going to bring deliverance through his word. When all hell is breaking loose around you, it may not easy to be due may not be easy to do. And it may feel like, amen, that you're being dragged through the mud as you hold on to the word of God. But you invoke it. You claim it. You believe it. Amen. You hold on. Because Satan just doesn't throw one thought at us. He throws feelings at us as well. Think about it. Whenever a thought of doubt or fear comes into your mind, you begin to feel that thought. You begin to feel whatever it may be in your member, that thought. It begins to take hold of you if you begin to dwell upon it. So I'm going to dwell upon the word. I'm going to believe that he is my warrior. And you know what? Just as I would feel that doubt and that fear or that lust, amen, that it begins to well up within me when I think upon the word of God. Oh, that warrior spirit is going to arise with inside of me. Why? Because I'm invoking the word of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is going to grow. The Holy Ghost is going to become stronger. And I can stand there and I can say, it is written. Amen. I will have no fear because God hath not given me the spirit of fear. It is written. Whatsoever I ask in your name, my God is going to do it. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe it. My God is a warrior and my God is going to rise up and give you strength to overcome the enemy. You say, well, what do you mean, Brother Yusuf Pan? Well, when you say you walk in the house late at night and the lights don't go on and you don't have a flashlight, there might be a moment that a spirit of fear creeps over you. Amen. But we are going to counter against it because the Word of God, amen, is your strength. And where your strength is revealed, Amen. What are you doing? You are exercising it. You are increasing it. And every time you depend upon it, you become stronger and stronger and stronger in the kingdom of God. That's why we've got to stand strong. That's why we've got to believe what we sing. That's why we've got to stand on what is true and not let it go. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do we believe it or not? Come on, do we believe what Jesus said? That the gates of hell, but bring you to pain. You don't know what I'm facing. It doesn't matter what you're facing. And I'm not saying that lightly. But what I am telling you, that if the word of God is true, amen, then the gates of hell is not going to prevail. The gates of hell, they are not going to overcome. And they are not going to be victorious against the church or the saints of God. So when the enemy cometh in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. Why? Because my God is my warrior. He is my strength. He is my savior. He is my deliverer. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 3 says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Bind truth and mercy about thy neck. Amen. I don't wear a clip-on tie. 
I wear a real tie. So if you pull this tie, you know what's going to happen? One of two things. Either you're going to choke me or I'm going to follow you. Amen. Or three, try to break away from you. Amen. So what we need to do, we need to bind mercy and truth like we tie a necktie. Devil, you're not going to get a hold of me because I'm holding on. You may try to pull it and take it away from me, but no. It's tied in a good knot. Amen. And it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to claim it. I'm I'm going to invoke it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to stand upon it. And when I bind mercy and truth around me, hallelujah, and I write them upon the tables of my heart, I'm going to see that he is my God and that he is my warrior. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. And I have become his habitation. The Bible says, Proverbs 6.22, speaking about the word of God. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, and when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Let me ask you something tonight. Do you have the word of God so much into your heart and in your spirit that the word of God talks to you, that scriptures come to your mind when you need them the most? If it doesn't, it needs to. Amen. Because this is how you're going to receive your strength. I become sensitive. You become sensitive to the Holy Ghost that God will bring a word. God will bring a scripture to us. Amen. That thought will cross our mind. So we open up our Bible and we try to find where it's at and we begin to read it. And when we read it, we begin to feel the anointing of the Lord begin to flow through our body. Why? Because truth is going to deliver you. Amen. When we believe truth and we stand upon it and we invoke it in the name of Jesus and I understand that my God is my warrior. Hallelujah. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to grow more bolder if you will. Uh, my faith is going to increase. Amen. That God is true and God is faithful and God will not let you down. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. We're going to keep the word of the Lord. We're going to put the word of the Lord in our heart. And as we do that, it's going to keep our heart. It's going to become a guard for us. It is going to become a fortress. Amen. It is defending our heart like a castle. Amen. It is defending the seat of your strength. And you do not want to give it away. This is what Samson did in Judges chapter 15, 16 verses 15 through 18. And Delilah said, how can you mock me? How can you say that you love me when your heart, listen, how can you say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and hath not told me wherein my great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her, what? All his heart. He told her all his heart. He was not guarding his heart. He was not remembering the word of the Lord that God spoke to him. Amen. As a young man or the word that was spoke to his mother and dad and that was instilled with inside of him. Amen. And so when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, then he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not a razor come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And the Bible says, look what it says again in verse number 18, And when Delilah saw that he told her all his heart... She sent and called for the large of the Philistines. Put the word of God in your heart. So when these things come up against you and try to plague you and press against you, you do not reveal the secret of your strength. You do not open up your heart, amen, to the Delilahs or to the ungodly things of this world that they will interject and intercede in your spirit and in your life, that they will draw your strength. They will draw your anointing. They will draw your blessing. But 
but we are going to stand strong. We are going to put the word of God in our spirit because my God is my warrior. You hear what I'm saying tonight, church? I said my God is my warrior, and I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my life. I'm going to guard myself with the word of God. And when the word of God is in my soul, when the word of God is in my spirit, then I know that the angels of the Lord, they're going to encamp round about me. And I know and I understand, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because my God is my warrior. We must be careful. We must be watchful, especially in the beginning of a temptation. Because when that temptation comes, that is the time that the enemy is easily defeated. Because if you let him in, or if you give him space, amen, he has the entrance into your door. It's easy to keep someone out of your house with the door locked and letting them in and trying to get them out. Same thing with the devil. We're going to keep the heart, the door of our heart shut with the word of God. Amen. And we're not going to let him in. So when that temptation comes in whatever form it may be or that thought comes and begins to knock, amen, and it may look good through the peephole. No, no, no. Let the word of God arise in your heart. Let the spirit of God arise in your heart. Amen. That the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song. The Lord is my salvation. He is even my deliverer. Hallelujah. I am his habitation because he is my God and he is my warrior and he is going to fight for me and I am going to be victorious. Too many times we let things in our life that we have no business letting into our life. And then we have to pay the price for it later. Let's just, just shut the door. Keep the door shut. Amen. So when we keep the devil out, when we keep the thoughts out, because we cast down those images, we cast down those thoughts to the obedience of Christ, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, amen, then there becomes a turning point in our life because we see our God as a man of war. The battle shifts to a new level because my God, my warrior, is with us as he was with Joshua. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 6, the word of the Lord came to him and said, Be strong! And of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all that the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whither thou goest. When you hold on to the word, hear me tonight, when you hold on to the word, you can be strong, you can be courageous, because Jesus is on your side. He is your warrior, and he's going to carry you through the battle. Look at what he said in verse number 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't let the words of God ever depart. Amen. From you. Keep them in your heart. Keep them in your soul. Amen. But you shall meditate thereon day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all according that is written therein. For then... For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Have I not commanded thee, verse number 9, be strong and of good courage? Three times he told them in these three verses, be strong, be of good courage, be strong, be courageous, amen. Neither be afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wherever thou goest. And I'm here to tell you today, just as it was with Joshua, my God is going to be with you wherever you go. Be strong and be courageous because my God is a God, amen, of war. He is my warrior, and the word of God is going to be my weapon, and my praise and worship through faith is going to be my weapon, and God's going to go before me, and God's going to overcome the strongholds. God's going to take down the gates of hell, and we are going to be victorious. We are going to prosper and we are going to have great success in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm sure before Joshua received this word, he was probably a little fearful because for years he was Moses' right-hand man. 
But because Moses was disobedient to God, Moses was not able to lead Israel into the promised land. Amen. And so Moses was dead and gone, and now the children of Israel were turned over to him for him to lead. And I'm sure that he thought, man, Moses has been with these folks for 40 years. They're, they're just not going to up and follow me. They're used to Moses. They're, they're used to his voice. Amen. I wonder what they're going to think. I wonder what they're going to do. Amen. He was going to have to earn their trust. Amen. But Joshua became confident because God told him over and over again, don't be afraid. So when you wonder... And you begin to question, understand, amen, that God has given you a word that he is your strength. He is your song. He is a man of war. He is your warrior. And as God told Joshua in Joshua 1 and 5, a special word, there shall not any man to be able to stand before thee all the days of, I, the, of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. I'm here to tell you tonight church God's not going to fail and God's not going to forsake when we hold on to him when we believe his word when we stand strong can somebody say amen because he is my God and he is my warrior if he was with you 40 years ago he's still going to be with you today if he was with you 30 years ago he's still going to be with you today come on if he's only been with you for just a couple of years he's going to be with you today because my my God is true. My God is faithful. My God is my God. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. He is my warrior. How was God with Moses? As a mighty warrior. Remember the plagues? Amen. Remember all the Egyptian soldiers that drowned in the Red Sea with their horses and chariots? In fact, this is where our scripture reading, Exodus 15, 2 and 3, takes place on the other side of the Red Sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. God fought for Moses, and God fought for Israel. And he made a covenant with Joshua. I am going to fight for you. Amen. Wherever you go, no man is going to stand against you. And I'm here to tell you today, when you put the word in your spirit. You put the word in your heart. God is going to be that same God that he was with Joshua. He's going to be that same God that he was with Moses. He's going to be your God. He's going to be your warrior. He's going to be your strength. He's going to be your song. He's going to become your salvation. Look how many times he's delivered. Look how many times he's answered prayer. If he's done it one time, he's going to do it again. You hear what I'm saying? If he's done it one time, He's going to do it again because, God, I want you to do what you're famous for. You are the deliverer. You are the Savior. You cast, amen, amen, the power and glory on the head of your people and brought deliverance through the Red Sea. So will you bring deliverance to me? The prophet Jeremiah knew, to, knew what it meant to have God with him. Jeremiah 20 and 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty and terrible one. What does that mean? That means he's a mighty man of war. Amen. And for the enemies that come up against God, they're going to tremble. Because therefore my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall greatly be ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Let him be your God. Let him be your warrior. Understand that as we fight, it's not us fighting, but it is Jesus with us. Because then this opens to our mind and our spirit. Amen. The riches of God's power. And we begin to see him in a mighty way. And we can take the words to heart. Matthew 28 and 20. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And Hebrews 13 and 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Now that doesn't simply mean he's just around. And it just doesn't simply mean he will comfort us in our afflictions. But what he's telling us in Matthew and Hebrews is that he's going to fight for us. He's going to be, our, be on, on our side because he is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. He is my God. So as long as we walk with Christ and stay with him, we don't have anything to fear. You hear me? We don't have anything to fear. When we face hard times, when we face frustrating times, it is then that Satan tries to appeal to your self-preservation. What do you mean by that, Brother Yusupan? We always try to make a way of escape for ourselves. We always try to make a plan, amen, for us to fall back on in case God doesn't. Amen. He uses fear. He uses intimidation. But you don't need to allow it. You just stand upon the word that he is my strength. He is my song. He is my deliverer. He is my salvation. He is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. The most dangerous man on earth is the man that has reckoned his own death, that he has given up the fight. You know, I, I read this, and I thought this was pretty interesting. It says, courage is almost a contradiction in terms. It means a strong desire to live, amen, by taking on the form of a readiness to die. Amen. As Jesus said, he that loses his life shall save it. Amen. A person can only get away from death by continuously stepping within an inch of it. You say, well, what do you mean? When a soldier in combat battle is surrounded by the enemy, he has to cut his way out. He has to have a stronger desire to live than a desire to die. I am going to get out of this foxhole. I am going to get out of this situation. And I am going to go home to my family and friends. That's why you can read stories from World War I or World War II of single soldiers that withstood the enemy. Amen. As they were being surrounded and they would fight for their life. That's why you can read in the scripture about the mighty men of David. How one stood in the midst of a parcel of ground and defended, amen, the field of lentil beans. Amen. When the Philistines were trying to come in. Why? Because he knew that was strength. He knew those beans were the, the provision, amen, to live another day. And he said, I'm not going to go down dying and without trying. But I'm going to give it all I've got. And when you understand that God becomes your strength, I'm not giving it all I got. I'm depending upon him to let him be my warrior, my song, my deliverer, my strength my salvation amen we just cannot be a coward amen but we must not wait for death to come upon us either amen but we must seek that life that I'm willing to lose it and give it to Jesus and trust Jesus that he's going to see me through he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way amen his desire for life, for one that has courage, the writer goes on to write, he must desire life like water and yet drink death like wine. A lot of water, a little wine. Amen. And we're going to come out of it. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 5.18, Be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled. Be filled with the Spirit. So when I am filled with the Spirit... Amen. I know my God is my warrior. Colossians 3.16, the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Do you know that being filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18, and being dwelt with the word of God dwelling in you richly, being filled and dwelling in you richly, comes from the same Greek thought. So we're filled with the Spirit. 
We're filled with the Word of God, with wisdom, teaching, amen, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Why? Because my God's my warrior. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. He is my God. He is my warrior. Amen. These two scriptures, Ephesians 5 and Ephesians, or Colossians chapter 3, is a continual experience or process. It's not just a one-time happening, but it is a continual process. Amen. That as I go through life, I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. How? Amen. By relying upon the Word. By praising and worshiping my God. Because as I've I said multitudes of times, and I said it maybe last Wednesday night, our praise and our worship is an expression of our faith. Because we are singing what we believe. Hallelujah. What are we singing? We are singing the promises of God's word. We are singing how great our God is and how awesome our God is and how majestic our God is. So somebody shout hallelujah. My God is my warrior. I'm going to overcome and I'm going to fight when the devil tries to throw a blow. You know what? I'm not going to take it, but I'm going to fight back. I'm going to give him the word of God. I'm going to remind him, thus saith the word, it is written. It is written. It is written. Max Lucado wrote this. He said the 1989 Armenian earthquake needed only four, mitten, four minutes, excuse me, to flatten the nation and kill 30,000 people. He went on to write, moments after the deadly tremor ceased, a father raced to an elementary school to save his son. And when he arrived, he saw that the building had been leveled. And looking at the mass of stones and rubble, he remembered a promise that he made to his son. And this promise was, no matter what happens, I will always be there for you. So driven by his promise, he found the area closest to his son's room, and he began to pull back rocks. Other parents arrived, and they began to sob for their children. And as the minutes turned into hours, they would tell the man, it's too late. You know they're dead. You can't help them. Even a police officer encouraged him to give up. But the father refused. He told his son, I'll always be there for you. Four hours turned into eight hours. Eight hours turned into 16, then 32, and 36 hours he dug. His hands were bleeding. His hands were raw from moving the concrete and the rocks and the blocks and his energy gone. But he refused to quit. Finally, after 38 wrenching hours, that's over a day and a half of constant digging, he pulled a boulder back heard his son's voice. He called his boy's name, Armand, Armand. And a voice answered him, Dad, it's me. Then the boy added these precious words. He said, I told the other kids not to worry. I told them that if my dad was alive, he'd save me. He saved me, he'd save you too. Because he promised, I will always be there for you. That's my God. That's my warrior. He'll always be there for you. For the roads, he's there for you. You hold on. Sister Nathan, when you get to talk to Brother Nathan, you let him know I told him God is there for him and God will not let him down. Sister Andrew, you go home tonight 
and you look at your dad and just say these words, Daddy, God's there for you. He's never left you, never will. You just turn your back and walk away. My God is my warrior. Come on. My God is my warrior. Do we believe it? Do we believe it tonight? As we face the days and the weeks and the months and if the Lord tarries the years to come, God's going to see us through because he's my God. He's my warrior. He's my strength. He's my salvation. He's my God. He's my song. And I will prepare him that habitation. Here you are, God. Dwell with inside of me. Let your power overflow me. You are my Father's God, and I'm going to exalt him because my God is a man of war. He is my God and my warrior. Let's stand. Let's love the Lord as we worship and sing. Praise our God. He's my hope.
Let's love the Lord, let's love the Lord, let's love the Lord. You are my strength, you are my song, you are my salvation, you are my God, and you are my warrior, in Jesus' name. And somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. He is great and greatly to be praised. Sunday, be here. Bring someone with you. Amen. Let's have a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Keep Sister Alicia and her grandfather in prayer. Uh, my sister-in-law's mother-in-law, Miss Chisholm, and the Chisholm family. Amen. And those that are not here tonight, ill, Sister Andrea, Sister Joyner, not feeling well, continue to pray for backsliders. Brother Nathan, Brother Sister Rose, my wife. Amen. Church family, you're dismissed in the name of the Lord. God bless you.